Sweeter, amen. Now is the time for all people to every man to come together. Now is the moment for worship. We
شوار
with the angels at This is a good time to give the Lord a shout of praise. He's holy today. Come on, he's holy tonight. Is he your king? Is he your king tonight? Hallelujah. Say, he's my king. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. I don't know about you, but there's just a presence of worship and anointing in this room right now. Lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, right now. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. I give you praise. I want to read from the word of the Lord where the psalmist says in Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. Say amen. 
His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Can you say amen? The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, like this verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions suffer in hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack good, any good thing. This is the word of the Lord for you tonight. Come, you children, listen to me. I underline that just now. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you, the, you the, the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Oh, I like what the, verse 17 says. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them all out of all their troubles. You seem like you had troubles, child of God. The righteous shall be set free. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Because the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and such and say such as have a contrite spirit. Listen to the next verse. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, say the Lord, delivers you out of all, out of them all. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, he said, I will deliver you out. You may be going through the storm. You may be taken and going through the fire. But the thing is, the Word of God says that the Father will bring you out. Amen. And you'll come out on the other side praising the Lord. And you're looking back and say, goody, goody devil, you thought you had me, but you didn't have me. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that good? Hallelujah! Somebody shout glory. Praise the Lamb of God. Turn around to two or three hundred people. Greet them in Jesus' name. Let them know that you're glad you're here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. There is anointing in this room. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like that old saint of God says, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lamb of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you what Bishop Jacob said. Go shake hands. Let them know. Don't get their social security number. Try to move in. Let's go to the church. Praise the Lamb of God. I don't know, I just, this has been rolling over in my spirit. Yeah, put it on. I just can't wait. Amen. I, right here, the anointing is in the house. I want you to play it. And you, I know what you're going to do. You're going to stand up, put your hands together. Come on. Put your hands together for this song. I'm going to act like I'm singing. Brother Job was God's perfect man. He was protected by the hedge of God's hand. Satan. Maybe that anointing of singing like that will flow over on me. But God said, you, Lord? you can lose. He lost everything but his soul. But in return, Woo! he gained more and more. He had to wait while you wait to keep the praise until the answer comes. Oh, just wait. While you wait to count your blessings, number one. Just wait. Oh, just wait. See what God has done. Just wait. While you wait and keep on praise until the answer comes. Oh, just wait, but keep on praise until the answer comes. Oh, just wait. Oh, just wait. 
When the ushers and readers march on the aisle. Down in the prison house, crying, Lord, how will you bring me now? I've lost my coat, my family too. God said, Joseph, I'm not through. Oh, God's not through with you yet. Just wait. Oh, just keep on praising. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Just wait. Hallelujah. Oh, just, just keep praising him, church. Somebody come and dance down the aisle. Come on. God said, Esther, leave this to me. By his hand, she became queen. Hallelujah. She had to wait while you wait and keep the praise until the answer comes. Oh, just wait. Somebody's waiting tonight. You're going to get an answer tonight. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Lord. You got away. Oh, you got away. Wait till the blessings come. in this house hallelujah now you dance back to your seat right up the center aisle come on somebody else needs to see your joy was God's perfect man yeah he was protected by the hedge of God's hand Woo. Satan came to accuse but God said choke you can't lose he lost everything but his soul but in return he gained more and more he had to wait while you wait and keep the praise until the answer comes oh just wait, wait just wait just wait i'm just waiting for a blessing to come I can keep you going all night with that one. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Praise the Lamb of God. Somebody needed that. Come on, somebody needed that. Hallelujah. Well, we'll give the Lord a praise. Amen. You can be seated for a few minutes. Praise the Lamb of God. Joseph down in the here. prison house. Crying Lord. Well, this is camp meeting night. You're breaking off. The, we're breaking off the first night of camp meeting. We're having service every other night, it seems like. Glory to God. Isn't God good? I believe some of you have been planting some seeds. You know what the song was about? It says, wait until the blessings come. Just while you wait, praise him anyway. 
Amen? Amen? I mean, this room, you've been waiting and waiting and waiting, but God said, just keep praising. I've been waiting for 20 years. Joseph waited how many years? How many years was he in captivity? I don't remember. He went in captivity, but he became the second man over Egypt. But he waited. But he would never turn to the idols, never turn to the world's God. He still served his God. Hallelujah. And God used Joseph to save his people and, his, and God's people, the nation of Israel. And there's somebody in this room tonight that you've been waiting but you've got to follow God hallelujah you're in the right place and it's time for your breakthrough how many of you believe that <laughs> I didn't seem like somebody believed that Isaiah 32 verse 20 happy and fortunate are you who cast your seed upon all the waters when the river overflows its banks for the seed will sink into the mud and when the waters subside the plant will spring up say spring up say this women seed spring up here's what I want you to do is you're preparing over these weeks over some since November have been you you've been struggling you, I'm telling you I know you've been struggling well I can't do that I can't do that but I'm telling you say I can I can I said, Pastor, what am I saying I can do? Next Sunday, you're, you're going to bring $400. Sarah, they're going to come. Say, it's coming. It's coming. I'm believing next Sunday there's going to be $2,500, $400 coming. It's going to be resurrection seed. I know it's. I know what we're using it for, but we're going to we're going to turn it to a seed. We're going to we're going to be the resurrection seed because see the the plant will spring up. And see, when we bring our seed, I, I was hoping the, they would be here tonight. And, and, and y'all pray with me. I was sitting there and, and uh, I was just praying for families. Just, just come on and be in this service tonight. And get a hold of what God is, is doing. But I can tell you this. A young couple came and placed the seed into the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they believed for a miracle. And as they were speaking that day, as they were praying over the sea, God spoke to one to do this, and God spoke to the other one, and it was the same thing, and they obeyed the Lord. And the next day, he got the call. He had a job. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, that was just coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. We've got to come to the place that we're believing, and we're believing for a mighty uh, a touch of God in our lives or whatever it is. Let's get some seeds in our hands. Amen? Praise the Lord. Brother Terry, when you get back, the ice is already gone. The river's probably receded. There might be something growing up along the bank. That tree the Lord has promised you. That bar the Lord has promised you. Who's been promised something you've been holding on? Maybe you Maybe you lost, uh, you're, 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 you, you got discouraged and you, you, you've used your resources for other things and the enemy's come to steal, to kill, to destroy and taking and pulling your seeds and pulling your giving away from the kingdom work of God. The Lord showed me a few weeks ago and I shared it with you last week when I shared this message on this revelation seed on Sunday morning, Sunday night. And he told me, come, I was in here praying, and I was in my office, and I was praying. As I was, and he told me, he said, the seed's in the house. Are well, you hearing what I'm saying? See, it, it, it don't mean that somebody with big bucks to show up. It means that everybody just do their seed. Come on, do you hear what I'm saying? Seed is not your tithe now. Your seed is your, your bringing forth, your giving to the cause of it. And because, see, when that seed comes... You put it's, it's put into as it as the Holy Spirit quickens you to do it and it's, and he's already done with some others and I believe in that we're gonna see reports in this next few weeks. But the seed is the Holy Spirit quickens your heart. It's placed in the hands of the Lord and he takes it before the Father, and the Father then then you experience the blessing of that seed. I've asked the Lord the seeds that we have planted in missions over the last three or four years. Father, bring it. 
Let us experience that blessing. Amen. The promise has been here. See, what we have to do, we have to stop looking at someone else, how they're being blessed. Isaiah 32, verse 20 in the message says, but you will enjoy a blessed life. Amen. Planting well-watered fields and gardens with your farm animals grazing. Something happened strange yesterday afternoon. After everybody left, I had some more work to do on the little property over there. And uh, Noah stayed with me. He wanted to stay. We was over working. All of a sudden, we heard thunder, didn't we? Anybody else hear that thunder? Or was it just Noah and I? See? See, I had Noah with me. There's some of us went out and seen the opening play. And, and it was Friday night, and I said, man, we hadn't had no rain. I hadn't heard thunder, and I don't know when. And we was, over, was in the backyard, and, and, and I heard thunder. And I got to thinking. I said, well, maybe the play started. And there's been praying for rain, and we're going to get some rain. Well, it started raining a little bit. I, I just, listen, I went and took my cap off and put my uh, keys and put it on the porch over there and, and finished working in the rain. I said, no, if you want to go get dried off, you can. He, he stayed with me. But see, Noah was believe what God said. Amen? Because see, he believed that the word of God, when God spoke those words to him, there's going to rain. He said it. How I many has been waiting for rain? I was listening this morning in the office. Tim Hill's song that I share with you many times. I'm going to rain on your fields again. I believe it's time that many of you, you've been struggling physically, emotionally, habitually. You just put all the habituals in there that you've been holding on to, those habits you love. You've been struggling. And you say, why am I, why am I continue going around this mountain financially? Why am I, because see, you haven't caught this principle. You have not caught this principle of believing that God is able. So you gotta, you got to believe it's a supernatural word. See, when you bring your tithe, it's supernatural. That God said he would rebuke the devourer for his, his, his sake. Amen? Amen? I shared a little bit, and, I, I, and he's, he'll probably share it with you. I shared a little bit this morning. God rebuked the devourer for you. The devil's a liar. And I know this. The devil's a liar over your families. He's been trying to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus come to give life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is it when you show up, I want to preach? That's that, that's that apostolic connection. Remember that, don't you? Glory to God. But listen, you need to stop looking at someone else, how they're being blessed. You have to see yourself blessed. I want you to go home tonight and look in the mirror and say, I am blessed. Come on. I'm blessed. Somebody got a new house this year. Amen. Somebody got a new car this year. Amen. Woo. Somebody got a new husband. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> and somebody got a new wife. Glory to God. We're praying for some others. We'll have another mass wedding. We'll get like the Catholics. We'll just have a mass wedding. Did you hear that? God will make a way for you, and it does not matter where your tree lies. You may say, I see what you're doing for others, but what about me? Why don't we get away from that? And let's get our offering together tonight for the work of God. So I'm asking you to pray. I, I really, praying's over. You only got, we only got, you only got a week, ten days, at the most, for that twenty-five, four hundreds to come. It's already, it's either in your heart now or it's not there. We're gonna believe for it. Amen. Glory to God. Bishop called me this week. He just called to check on Ty and I, and I got him to know how things were going. I told him, I told him what was happening, and um, he said.
said, I'm leaving with you. Amen. And uh, we're leaving for a great move of God this next week. Amen. I want our ushers to come. I know we got a busy week, but the Holy Spirit is just quickening me. In our 714 prayer, I'm asking every worker, if you work in any capacity of the ministry of this church, with cutting edge, teacher, worker, whatever it is, for one hour. Jesus said to his disciples, could you not tarry with me for one hour? You remember the story? When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples were there. And he, they said, oh yeah, Pastor, we with you. Oh, excuse me. Jesus, we're with you. And then they go to sleep. Left him by himself. And he went over and woke him up. He said, could you not tarry with me for one hour? And I want to say something to you in this season. This is March. The end of March. First of April now, excuse me. April 4th, excuse me. Uh, today's April 1. It's a new season. When we hit Easter, in the spiritual seasons, it's a new season. Just Debbie, it's a new season. And I'm telling you, I'm asking you in your homes through the next few weeks, I'm asking you to make your home a house of prayer. But I'm asking you tomorrow night at 714. I'm going to lead the prayer tomorrow night. I'll leave it to others. We're going to be here for one hour. Because I know you've got busy schedules, but I've got a, the Holy Spirit already told me how we're to pray. And we're going to come in here. At, we're going to start at 714. Don't run in here at 715. We're going to start. But I'm asking if you're desiring to see the, your family saved, and I'm going to challenge you this week, and we're going to make up some uh, handouts Wednesday. It's going to say free ticket. I want you to get the people of God in this unsaved families, loved ones that need to know the Lord. And I believe Wednesday night and Saturday night and Sunday we can pack this house out. Amen? Can we do it? I believe that. I don't want you raising your hand. How many called somebody today and said we're having revival service tonight? Don't raise your hand. But I want you to do that. And I'm asking you to just, we're going to do nothing but come in here and soak and pray and come into a prayer of agreement over some areas this week and over the work of the kingdom for a supernatural moving hand of God. Amen? You ready for that? Father, I thank you for every giver. I thank you, Lord, tonight. Lord, you're going to minister in this service tonight. We're going to give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. This is 
God. Thank you, ladies. Would you give the worship team? They've done a wonderful job today. Amen. Come on. Well, it's an honor and privilege to have Debbie and Mark back home tonight. Amen. It's been a while, and uh, I want you to give him a warm welcome and uh, let him know that you love him and appreciate him coming and being with us tonight. Amen. Come on, Brother Mark. Come take your liberty in the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody looks so good tonight. Everybody sounds so good tonight. How about that praise and worship team? I'm telling you what. You know, it's amazing when uh, the Bible says that my sheep know my voice. But also it says in there that you know his presence too. And we're in his presence right now. And it's amazing to me that you can feel the peace of God on one hand, and on the other hand, the power of God. I mean, we feel that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, but yet at the same time, I feel the power of God that makes me to rise up and say that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I want you to do me the favor tonight. I know you've already heard the praise and worship team, but I'm just going to do it how the Holy Ghost has me to do it. You may know some of the words of it. You may not know some of the words to it. But I want you to stand with me all over this house. I want us to go a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper tonight. I want everybody to realize that this isn't just a normal service for you tonight. This is a divine service. It was divinely ordained for you to be here tonight. And God has something special for you tonight. I believe it way down deep inside me. I don't know if you felt it, but I, I felt it for myself. I, in fact, I've already received it. I think a lot of times is, is that we haven't learned how to actually receive. 
If we get to the point where we can receive it, I mean receive everything that there is. I mean don't let no distractions next to you, to the left or right of you, to the front or back of you, but to hear what God's got to say to you tonight. Because He's got a word for you, Brother Kenny. He's got a word for you. So let's just raise our hands to heaven. Brother Ed, he's going to play this. And this is worship. If you know some of the songs, I'm not going to say I'm going to sing along, but I'm not going to. Your presence is the presence of the King on His throne. Transcending human understanding, your presence like a morning after rain, leaving clean, redeemed. And we 
Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I mean, put them together like you know that He's uh, your King and He's coming back. Uh, come on now. Come on now. Clap your hands like tree limbs in the wind. Uh, glory to God. Give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Give a shout of praise. That means you got to open your mouth to give a shout of praise. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and be seated. Before we get into the Word and what God's given me, He gave this to me through a trial and through a tribulation that sometimes we get our Word from the Lord that He spoke to me. It was on March 3rd of this year. Pastor was telling you something about this morning, he said, but... Uh, uh, my truck uh, that I was driving in there, they had had it for a recall. Uh, and uh, when they, the mechanics put it back together, they did tighten down the exhaust manifold and what they call the UGR valve that was supposed to blow out clean air. Instead, it wasn't blowing out, but it was blowing in. And for three days, it would blew in. And I kept telling them I'm getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And I tried to tell them, but everybody turned a deaf ear to me. And then it was on that third day. How I many of you know a lot of things happened on that third day? I was on uh, in Doraville, Georgia, and I was on an on-ramp there, and I couldn't take it so much, and I got out of the cab, and I was getting sick on the side. And hallelujah, how many of you know that God supplies no matter what you're going through? I had a DOT officer that pulled up and pulled up right ahead of me and seen me getting sick he flipped on his lights came back to me and he thought I had the flu so he was covering up like this as he got a little closer he smelt the fumes and the exhaust all over me and I told him that it had been leaking in there and they had sent me then to the emergency room and they put me on oxygen it was like probably for two weeks or whatever I my throat and my chest and I, I just seemed like I couldn't talk I couldn't do do anything and uh, the doctor's first words was he says you know you're just lucky that uh, you're still around here and I said no there's no luck involved uh, I serve a God that will take care of me and will protect me but when I got back here I came back and in fact they uh, threw me out <laughs> they threw me out up there in Atlanta and uh, my wife had to come up there and get me and pack all my things up. And when I come back into Florida, we had to go over. We went over to the emergency room room to follow up because my doctor was, was gone for a few weeks. And when we went in there, I found out that he said, well, there's a spot in there we have some problem with, and it's on your right side. He said, there's a problem in there, and you've got uh, pneumonia in there, chemical pneumonia in there. And uh, he gave me uh, some of the heaviest antibiotics that there is and he told me to take him for 10 days and took him for 10 days and I didn't really do much talking if you can believe that um, but uh, my wife was real happy as you can see she's smiling right now but during that time you know have you ever asked God sometimes why did things happen the way that they did and how is it that I got out of you know, not laying up there dead when someone could have found me just dead up in there. And how was that? And he showed me in a vision this picture. I never even shared this with my wife, but she is the first time she'll hear this tonight. But he showed me with this angel. Mm. He showed me with this angel inside the cab uh, of my truck, and he had... While the exhaust was coming in one way, the angel was blowing the exhaust out the other way. And God spared me in there. And I don't know about you, but tonight I see things a lot differently. I see things a lot clearer. And God gave me this message tonight that I'm going to share with you. And believe me, I believe that, uh, that you have, uh, have something coming to you tonight. You have something coming to you from the Lord tonight. If you can sit here and receive from the Lord. I titled this, making it out of the storm in first john 3 8 he says he that committeth sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil 
How many know that that's true? That Jesus came. That Jesus came so we can have victory today. Jesus came so we can sit here tonight. Jesus came so we can be in service. Jesus came so I can lift my hands up. Jesus came so I can shout. Jesus came so I can dance uh, and I can see life differently. How many of you know that God gives us many weapons to use to fight the enemy, but two of the ones that He gives us is the Word and prayer. The Word and prayer. And under the anointing, which you know the Word's anointed because it's from God Himself. In fact, it's breathing right now all over this sanctuary and hopefully all over you. Let's stand together right now and let's go to the Lord in prayer because He's going to do something here tonight. And I hope you came expecting. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you're about to give. Lord, Father God, we ask that you anoint their ears so that they can hear, their heart so they can receive, and their minds, Lord, Father God, so that they can receive this word. We bind up the enemy and every hindrance that may be here that tries to come into this sanctuary. We cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the things you're about to do here this night. So we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Go to... Acts chapter 28, that's where I'll be. That's where we'll be laying groundwork tonight, as you might say. It's going to be a little different to me. I feel a little different, Sister Ty. I don't even feel like myself. Uh, some of you said when I came in here, Sister Ty said your hair looks a little darker and all that. I had a little story before I go into the Word. Uh, uh, how many of you know that I always use like that, 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 that scripture, and I will use it again here tonight, that you can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens you? Well, I found out that, uh, you know, I can't be a barber. What I did on Saturday, or it was Friday, I got, uh, we got a set of these clippers. And I thought, I could do it. I can do it. I can cut my hair. And I cut this thing, and I cut out one swoop here, and I said, oh, my God. And I cut out another swoop going to try and make it even on this side, and I said, oh, Lord, help me. And I didn't want my wife to come home, and I warned her, before you come home, don't say nothing about my hair. She didn't say nothing. She just started laughing, and she couldn't stop for about 30 minutes. So, we're going to go to revival down in Zulfal Springs, and I'm praying. And my prayer was like this. Oh, Lord, he knows that's true. Lord, don't let me see nobody that I know. <laughs> and who walks in? Oh, it was pastor. I said, oh, Lord. Then who walks in? It was Brother Mike. Then who was in? I seen that Sister Esther. I said, oh, Lord, this is a bad name. I, bad night. I wanted to put my coat over top of my head. And see, the thing is, it didn't look like this because I had to spend all Saturday trying to get it all fixed up and lined up because when you would have seen it, you would have thought the lawnmower man was after me and he wasn't real nice to me. I had that John Deere spirit come after me. <laughs> Believe me, it wasn't good. But he's seen me and everybody was there. How many of you know sometimes it's like that? Sometimes you can have some things even in your life that might be private, but sometimes down the road they can turn into public. Oh, Lord. And when they turn into public, you don't want to see nobody. You want to go run and hide. When he came in there, I said, oh, Lord Jesus. And what I did was I took a bunch of gel. As much gel as I could ever get in my hair. And I said, pa, pa, pa. And I'm trying to make it all straight. And it was so cockeyed and crazy. Lord, help us. It looked like and stuff somebody and stuff drunk off the street came up in the service. He couldn't have laid hands on me because he would have slid right off the top of my head. How many is in Acts 28? It says in there, and when they were escaped, 
Then they knew that the island was called Melta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, they became, they came, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw this venomous beast hang on his hands, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Verse 5, and he says, And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. How about they looked when he should have swollen, swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Back further back, just a little waves, if you were to look in there, and you don't have to look now, but it was in verse 27, 20 through 25. It sees in there where an angel comforts Paul in the midst of the storm. How many of you know that God can send an angel in the midst of your storm? How many of you know it doesn't matter what's going on and stuff? He can just, uh, by one click, by one little phase like this, an angel can swoop in here tonight and be here along with you. But how many of you know inside here we feel the presence of of the Lord. And where there's presence, there's power. And where there's power, there's all kinds of provision. They were met there by some kind natives who had a warm fire built already, but trouble was just around the corner. How many of you know that even in the midst of his trouble, God was still working on the other end, and he had somebody else build him a fire? How many of you know that God can speak to some people on down the road, that he uses people some down the road, that he has an answer and has, has your solution already there that he can use to be able to help you out? Even the heathen can be able to help you out. He can turn the heathen around, and all of a sudden he may be a bigger blessing than others. Tonight I want to give you four points, and if you get these four points, you're going to be able to get through the storms of life. And I want to be led tonight and be led by the power of the Holy Ghost. The first point I want to give you is about the provisions of God. When you run out of all options, God seems to show up on the scene. When you think that you're down and out and you ain't going to ever make it, all of a sudden you feel the presence of God and the provision is there. I'm going to tell you that tonight the provision is here. Your King is here. Glory to God. I, I feel His presence. I feel the anointing. I felt the anointing as they sang tonight. Uh, and while you were worshiping and praising Him, I felt His power and His pra- and in that praise. How many of you know that God knows all about your troubles? He knows about everything that there is. I used to think I have to dial Him up all the time and remind Him about what I'm going through. Like He would forget. Like he doesn't know. He's an all-knowing God. An all-seeing God. The Bible says he's omnipresent. God will always make a way of escape. When you're down, he said, when you're... See, people think that uh, when you're down, God's saying, you're up. He said, when you're sick, he says, you're healed. When people tell you that you're destroyed, he said, oh, no, 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 no. Everything's just started. You're okay. You're delivered. The blessing of the Lord, as it said in there in Deuteronomy, it tells us that the blessing of the Lord will overtake you. What it's saying is it was basically it will tackle you. Have you ever been tackled? Some of you men playing football and you're running with the ball and someone blindsides you and tackles you? Imagine to, just for a moment that God's blessing flows in here tonight and it tackles you and overtakes you and lays you down prostrate tonight for the blessings of the Lord. See, when you get a blessing in here, as you see with Paul, you just don't sit around. Uh, see, uh, 
they provided the fire. God provided the fire. And what Paul was doing was going out and gathering up some sticks. And he's going to lay them on the fire. So he went and laid them on the fire. God was telling me in the midst of all that. Sometimes he says, when I, when I bless you, don't sit back and be lazy. Don't sit back and be lazy. But he says, uh, add to the blessing." Paul, what he was doing was trying to show us in the scripture there that he was going to add to the blessing. And how many of you know when you put wood on a fire, it keeps it going? See, we don't understand that sometimes in our praise and worship, if we enter in like we should and we're laying wood on the fire and we keep it going and we keep it going, our problem is sometimes we get that blessing and we want to sit down and relax until it dissipates like water in the desert. But God says tonight, if you just add to it, sometimes though there's a problem when you gather things, like they gather the wood, and He said when they laid it on the fire, out came out came of the fire was what? A snake, a viper, that fastened himself to him. Sometimes when you gather up some things. You gather up some things that you don't want to gather up. Sometimes you gather up some members of a church that maybe you wish that you didn't gather up. Sometimes you have some family members or some friends that attach themselves to you that you wish that you didn't gather up in the midst of that. If uh, anyone's like my family, there's some people in there I wish that we never gathered up. And in my past, there were some people that I wish I never gathered up because when I gathered them up, then I was uh, affected by them and the things that they did. And because I gathered up some of the wrong things uh, that went down the wrong path, you got to watch what you gather up and what you pick up. Sometimes you gather up things such as a, you might acquire a Judas Oh, I found out real sure that sometimes uh, everybody that hugs your neck and everybody says uh, that they love you don't really love you and they don't uh, really, uh, lo they're looking for some other alternative. They have some other alternative with you. And sometimes I've even felt where, you know what, it hadn't really been that loving uh, that sometimes, you know, they're sitting there, geez, 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 geez. when I walk away and I feel like I'm getting drained by some. You have to watch out on some with the pastor. Some people afloat from here to here to here. God will show you who your pastor is. God will show you where you're supposed to be at church. God will show you your ministry. God will show you which way to turn and where not to go to. I believe it was in Psalms 116.11. It says in there that God will show you a path. He says, in my presence, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy in His presence. See, we should have so much joy, it should be overrunning when we come in here. See, I'm not just saying in the house right here, but when we have that fullness in here, it should be overrunning. In fact, you should have a smile on your face tonight. Many times in the church we have found out this, that God spoke to me, is we spend so much time trying to keep the snake out. But the Bible says that God will take care of the wheat and tear. We're so worried about keeping snakes out when that's God's job. All we're supposed to do is sow seed. All we're supposed to do is go out there and preach the gospel to every creature that there is. All we're supposed to do is get them into the house. How Do you remember the time when you were lost and unsaved and someone spoke to you? I'm sure you wasn't looking that good yourself. I'm sure you probably acted like a snake one or two times in your life. Oh, I know. Maybe I'm just talking about myself. Maybe I don't have nobody else that I acted that way I'm sorry I'm among angels tonight uh, glory to God but I was a type of guy like I'm telling you what I felt at times I was lower than that and I stirred up a lot of mess and I got around the wrong people and I got around a lot of wrong things and I thank God that somebody spoke to a guy that still looked at me and says that God can use you and I'm here to tell you each and every one of you right now God can use you
It is your time right now. It's your destiny. You got to, he's got a plan and a purpose for you. The second point I want to make, and this is a, you can outshout the first one of provisions. It's called the protection of God. His divine protection. I understood that as I laid in there, as he showed me what he showed me in there. And not only that time, there's many times in my life where he flipped me back in time. And he showed me where his hand was still on me. Even when I wasn't doing right. Even when I wasn't acting right. Uh, even when I wasn't worshiping and or praising him. Even when I was running out there and doing everything wrong. His hand was still on me. He protected me. And he protected you. Oh, we would have stories after stories after stories of people in here that could testify of how God protected them. And how he kept his hand on them. I'm calling that divine protection. Right now, just shout out loud, thank him, and shout, I'm protected. Oh no, come on, shout it like you mean it, I'm protected. Come on, stand up and shout, I'm protected. Oh, Lord, somebody is going to get this down deep in them. I'm protected. If I ain't got nothing else in here tonight that happens, I'm protected. When I come into the house, I think of the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me. I'm protected. When they're trying to destroy your marriage, somebody shout, I'm protected. When they're trying to destroy your family, somebody shout, I'm protected. When they're trying to steal your joy, shout, I'm protected. When they're trying to rob your finances, shout, I'm protected. Hallelujah. When they're trying to mess with your ministry, Pastor, shout, I'm protected. I found out this. You can go ahead and be seated. Next one's on you. I always found out like this. There's always a witch or a warlock sitting around trying to throw a little voodoo, throw a little hoodoo on you and all kinds of things sitting around everywhere, sitting in the corner trying to mess with you. And I remember, you know, a witch, and they always try to say it like this, that they're, uh, they're putting a, this root and this curse on, on, on your way. And I told him and stuff, don't mess with me because I, I'll use the root of Jesse and the seed of Abraham. I got a bigger root than you got. Your root ain't going to do nothing to me. Oh, I'll cut your root up with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you could just get that down into your mind. And say that, you know, when you walk, that say, nothing, nothing is going to stand in my way. Because so there's nothing that God can't handle. God will protect you from the venom. But he won't stop the snake from biting you at times. See, the venom, when it gets into you, it only takes a little while and uh, you'll fall out dead. But that wasn't the case here. That wasn't the case at all. And how many of you know that, that the snake still will come your way and you'll still get bit? See, that's the, that's the myth a lot of times that people you know, say to other people that, uh, you know what, when you become a Christian, yeah, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to hear angels. I'm going to hear do singing. I'm going to be floating around in the church. Everything's going to be okay. But the minute that we get out under there, I'm going to tell you there's always a snake running around and he's looking to bite you. But I'm here to tell you, don't worry about the bite. You're going to get through the bite. Uh, hallelujah. Because it can't kill you. Because God already took care of the venom. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a story. I went to camp in a... Uh, many years back, and I was with uh, my middle son, and he was there, and I, I had all my sons together, and we were out camping, and we were in the woods, and uh, my, my, my middle son, he's kind of, he, he might have got this from me, he's like real dramatic about everything, and always loud and shaking his head, and all kinds of things, and he come running back, he went off the path, uh, how many ever been off the path? Uh, sometimes when you get off the path, you get bit, 
Oh, yeah, I can go there, but I'm not going to go. I'm going to stay here focused for a minute. He's, he was out there, and he was in there, and he got off the path, and he got bit, and he was screaming, running back to camp, saying, Dad, I got bit by a snake. I got bit by a snake. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And he's gone crazy. I finally had to grab him by the head of his hair, and I said, Calm down. You're going to be okay. I didn't know he was going to be okay, but that's the only thing I could think of right then. And that morning, I didn't really think that he got bit by a snake. I was looking. I see the things. I wasn't really sure. And I thought, maybe, you know, maybe it was something else. You know how you try and put it off or what have you. And I see in the morning that he has those two bite marks right there. And then we go back walking to the showers. And I go back to the walking to the showers. And what do I see across the path? It was that snake. It was dead. It bit him. And the snake died. This is how God works with us sometimes. Sometimes there's a snake out there. He'll bite you and he'll kill the snake. Why are we worrying about anything? God's going to take care of that snake. The snake's thinking, you're going to drop now. And here it is, the snake's laid out dead. And I'm kicking that thing and I said, Lord have mercy. It was a big snake too. It scared me just looking at it dead. Sometimes, as I said, that the bite takes you from private to public, but God still protects us. And what I mean by that, when it comes into public, I had, it was a few years back, my oldest son served in the military in the Marine Corps. And he got off the path, and he started selling drugs. And he started selling drugs, called a, a drug called ecstasy. And he went out into the community and was selling these drugs. And he was going out around everywhere. He done like he lost his mind. Uh, he went uh, the opposite way and uh, he started selling them and he got caught by the, the people there in the service. And the, uh, we used to call it in the Air Force called the OSI, uh, which is undercover agents. And they threw him in prison. They threw him in prison and he was in there and I remember after the first year he says that he got so down and so depressed uh, he said I've been getting ready he felt like he was going to take his life he says I I can't take this no more I just feel like I'm going to end it and uh, here it is that I'm just starting now to preaching and everything and how many of you know sometimes you can go out there like that and uh, everything comes back to you and it doesn't look so good everything then is exposed publicly and I'm thinking lie Lord and stuff you know and uh, hey I'm not going to worry about that usually say we're not going to worry about it but when people find out some things that you don't like to hear and here it is spread everywhere my goodness you can't even take care of your household. Your son's acting a fool. He's thrown up in prison or what have you. But I remember a letter he wrote me when he said he was going to take his life. And the only thing that came to me was about Paul and Silas being locked up in the jail. Uh, I said, listen to me. When they started praising him and worshiping God, it doesn't matter how bad it is. That Guess what? He said, all of a sudden, it opened up the jail door and then you came out. I'm believing right now in the name of Jesus. I told him on that paper. I said, I believe it like Paul and Silas. I believe the word of God because it tells me in the word of God if I just worship you if I just praise you you open up that jail cell and I walk out of there a year later from that time God miraculously turned things all around and he walked out of that prison not only did he walk out of that prison he cleaned up all of his reputation nothing followed him he's now serving the Lord in fact called me tonight and said he's thinking about coming down here because he wants to spend some time down here with me that's Jesus if you ain't gonna praise him I will the third point I want to make is talk about perseverance the Bible said the snake bit him and fastened onto him. Some people that you're around, Pastor, seeing the snake fasten themselves to you. Then looking around and they said, When is he going to drop dead? When are they going to close up the church? When are they going to fold? Uh, when is this divorce going to happen? When is this bankruptcy going to happen? They're looking around because they're looking just to see you dead and drop dead. Some of them ain't there just to support you. They're looking to see, 
Ha, huh, when am I going to be able to walk over top of him? Some people are just here to see whether or not you're going to die. And I know that I have experienced that just within the last weeks. They looked at me and they said they want to know, well, why, why didn't he die? I was looking at him, you know, it was almost like uh, I almost felt from him like I was hoping he would die. So we wouldn't have no mess on our hand. I was hoping that he would go away. But I felt that before in, uh, in my life and in my walk with the Lord. I, I not always felt like everybody was uh, for me. In fact, you know, uh, when I came out of the Catholicism and God moved me out of that. And when he says you got to move uh, from Ohio down into Florida and move out of Catholicism. He says, I'm going to show you the way to go. Then the Catholics say, you abandoned me. Come to the Pentecostal phase, and some push me away. Come to the Methodist, and they mash me. Come to the Bast Baptist, and they bashed me. You know, I'm thinking, like, which way? Where should I go? What should I do? Where is it that I need to go? And sometimes we look confused and dazed and don't know where to go. But if we just trust in God, just trust in God for Him to show you what you need to do, where you need to go, who you need to see, He'll pimp some people in your life that'll help you out. Tell somebody there may be a crisis tonight in your life going on, but I, I'm still standing. I may be going through bankruptcy, but I'm still standing. My son was jailed, but I'm still standing. I might have went through a death of a loved one, but I'm still standing. Glory to God. I lost a career, but I'm still standing. I don't have nothing coming in, but I'm still standing for Jesus. Somebody shout, I'm still standing. I said, tell somebody, I'm still standing. Not only am I still standing, I'm going to continue to stand for Jesus. Uh, I'm going to continue to stand for Jesus because I'm here to tell you, it ain't long before he comes back. Uh, it is not long uh, before he splits them eastern skies. It is not long before he comes back. And I'm just here to tell you, he is coming back. I said our king is coming back. I said our king of kings and lord of lords is coming back. I found out that we need to have the tenacity and say to ourselves, I'm not going to quit, but I'm going to endure to the end. Do you know really what tenacity is? Tenacity is when the devil hits you between the eyes and you drop to your knees. I used to be in the martial arts and I remember the first time uh, that I got in there and I thought when I was young I was quick with my hands and I wasn't good with my feet because I didn't know nothing about that but I figure I can strike you in the face pretty pretty quick uh, but one time I remember when I got in there it was a little different scene with another guy that knew martial arts and he kicked me upside the head I mean to tell you I was like I was seeing 50 of you I was just like this my head was ringing and it dropped me down to my knees and God reminded me of that time he says uh how many times that the enemy dropped you down? But how many times did you get back up? Uh, he said he might have dropped you down 50 times, but I got up 50 times. Uh, hallelujah. And I shook it off. Uh, somebody said I shook it off. That's tenacity. That means the tenacity that I'm going to march on for Jesus. Uh, like me or not, I'm going to march on for Jesus. Uh, try to kill me or not, I'm going to march on for Jesus. Try to put me three feet, ten feet under, I'm going to march on for Jesus. I was talking to Brother Mike, and he won't mind me saying this. But as we're talking, uh, uh, we're just sharing some things that I hadn't seen him, he hadn't seen me, blah, blah, blah. And he says, in and he doesn't maybe even remember saying it. He goes, like he wasn't even talking to me. He went into, a, he went into another zone. I had to follow him like, like he wasn't even talking to me. He goes, oh, yeah, you remember when Crazy Mark was there? He said, Crazy Mark was in the house, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him. He said, Crazy Mark. I said, you're talking to Crazy Mark. 
And God showed me in there that guess what? Sometimes we got to get like that. Uh, uh, you can look at me and say I'm crazy, but I'm crazy for Jesus. Uh, you might have said I lost my mind, but I lost my mind for Jesus. Uh, you might say I don't understand why he does what he does, but I do it for Jesus. Uh, I don't do it for you, 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 or anybody here. I do it for the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that comes to my fourth point. What Mike had was perception. God spoke to me about my preaching. See, I don't want nobody to see me. I don't want nobody to see Crazy Mark. I don't care if you call me Crazy Mark. It don't matter. I've been called worse than that. But I don't want you to see me when I preach. I want you to see him. I want you to see him because it's him that delivers you. It's Him that heals you. It's Him that sets you free. It's Him that breaks the chains. It's Him that go, goes ahead and lifts that oppression. It's Him. And His name is? Oh, come on. That's weak. His name is? Oh, come on now. Where are we at? We're at Faith Temple Church of God. His name is? That's it. Come on back. Talk to me. I like when I got talk back coming to me. You know, I don't want you to sit there like you're dead, like you're a bunch of dried up bones. Don't make me go into Ezekiel because I ain't there tonight. But I want to tell you that, see, we ought to be live and well. I was in a preacher the other night, and we were both in service, and he was down there in Zulfo Springs in revival. And we have so many revivals around here. But, uh, you know, after the dust clears, I see everybody just shrivel up and sit back down like they ain't never been in revival. I don't know about you, but I'm praying that we'll stay in the, in the state of revival all times. And if I'm in the state of revival at all times, that means I'm coming in here ready. I'm coming in here prepared. I'm coming in here. I'm coming down here to Faith Temple Church of God. And I know when I come down here, they know how to praise God. When I come down here, I know that I can preach in this house. And that I have liberty in here to be able to preach it. Everybody's so worried about what everybody's going to think. Oh, I can't dance no more because you're going to be looking at me. I can't shout no more because you think I'm crazy, Mike. No, I love Brother Mike. He's got a heart for Jesus. He loves the Lord. And he's okay with this, I'm sure. And if he's not, I need five other men to help me out. I'm going to get out of here. But I want to tell you like this. It's our perception sometimes. Understand that people are always watching you. No matter where you go, they're always watching you. You might not see them sometime, but they're going to watch Oh, uh, are they really like that? They said it on Sunday, but let me catch them midweek. Let me catch them out somewhere. Let me see if they really are acting like they say that they are. I used to couldn't stand the person that stood up here in holier-than-thou type attitude. I always seemed to want to go for an underdog, the one where they always counted out. I always wanted to go down to that underdog and to be able to share some words that God gave me to be able to lift them up. Uh, my, my, my stepdad was like that. He, he passed in 2005 of cancer, and he was like that. He, my mom said that he thought that he could, could help and turn everybody around, no matter who it was. She said, you probably bring home every homeless person that there is, everybody drunk, everything. He thought he could turn everybody around. The reason why, it was his attitude. I truly believe it like they say that your attitude determines your altitude. And I know with me he always used to say that. It's your attitude, Mark. It's your attitude. If you get your attitude in check, you're going to go somewhere. If you get your attitude in check, you'll be somebody. If you get your attitude in check. Some of us, we're not going nowhere because it's our attitude. But if we ever get an attitude of gratitude about what Jesus has done for us, uh, we won't have no problem and have nobody worry about coming up here and telling you to go ahead and praise Him. We won't have to tell you to go ahead and when to pray. Uh, hallelujah. We won't have to tell you when to stand, when not to stand. Uh, hallelujah. We won't have you to have that look, you know, like this. Like, You ever try and preach to someone anymore? I don't even really worry about it. Because I came in here, I made up mine, I'm going to get mine. Whether you like it or not, I'm coming in to get mine. 
I'm hungry in here. And I tell you what, it wasn't only but a few minutes that I walk in here in the service tonight, and I'm getting mine. I'd already sat down at the table, and I started scooping away. When we come down in here, we've got to get ready to eat. Eat the meat. I didn't say drink no milk, but eat the meat. When you're sick, they're watching you. When you're down and out, they're watching you. When you're going through a trial or tribulation, they're watching you. Uh, they're waiting to jump on you like that snake did to Paul in the fire. The per first perception was that they called him a murderer. Their first perception of Paul was that, you're a murderer. You must have done killed somebody. That snake jumped on you. How many know that the first time that you ever get in some trouble, everybody's got some word to tell you and something to come at you, some critic or whatever. Oh, he must not be in, uh, in church. Uh, he must not be taken because uh, he done messed up. Look at him now. We always point fingers. Look at him now. Look at him here. I, I believe that the word says to me that I'm supposed to edify and lift up. I'll leave the judging to him. I just want to be able to throw some seed. I just want to throw some seed wherever I go. I, it don't matter where I go. I throw it behind my back. I, I throw it through my legs. Uh, hallelujah. I do a round bout like that in a slam dunk. I just want to throw some seed. Uh, glory to God. Uh, how many I want to throw some seed? Uh, how many want to really throw some seed? Uh, I found out one thing that in order to throw seed, I got to be able to open up my mouth. I noticed Mike said, uh, how many rows back are you? One, two, three, four, five. He's in the fifth row because he told me I spit a lot. Oh, I was hoping you'd be on the front row tonight. I was going to come down and preach over top of you, and if I spit on you, whoo, Hallelujah. I think I told you this one other time before about how everybody's perception of you. When I first started out preaching, I always used to say, and stuff. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a nervous thing. I wasn't real, you know, I've never really got up and spoke, you know, to a lot of people and had to speak at different places, and I was nervous, and I was scared. Uh, I mean, my knees was knocking. My hands was sweaty. I'm sweatier than my forehead right now. My wife said, wipe it. Anyway, it says in there, you know what, that they always made fun of it. I found out later on, these was church folks, and, and they'd gather up after church, and they'd go down uh, to a place to eat, and uh, they never invited me to go, to go down there, but they'd go down there, and they were laughing, making fun of me, and says, well, this brother always says, and stuff. And I got it, came back to me, you know what, and it kind of stung me a little because it did affect me. I'm going to tell you, it does affect you sometimes when people do talk about you like this. We try to say, well, we'll shake it off. But I'm going to tell you, I wasn't good at shaking it off then, and it kind of hurt me in there. And it kind of knocked me down a little bit. But you know what, then God gave me this word. He says, you know what, I got a message for you. And I went in there, and I wish you could have seen their faces when I said tonight's message is about and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody looked like they turned white. <laughs> Hallelujah. It didn't matter if you was black, brown, or you was still white. You was turning whiter. And you turned white, and they all looked like they were going to collapse and pass out. It looked like the oxygen had stopped going to their brain. It looked like they was going to fall out in the aisle. And I don't mean by the Spirit of God. I mean they looked like I've been caught. Hallelujah. And he gave me that message about his stuff. And uh, I remember they asked me, he said, uh, uh, they were still looking. And then one person that really didn't, uh, uh, wasn't uh, participating in that, he said, well, what's the stuff about? I said, the stuff's about this. Salvation, trust, unity, and a firm foundation. That's the stuff I'm going to talk about. That's what I'm talking about right there. Salvation, trust, unity, and a firm foundation. And if we ever keep it to that, uh, we're going to be all right. Because that's what we should be preaching. We should be preaching Jesus. Not our opinion. Not anything else. But salvation, trust, unity, and a firm foundation. Some of us are falling because our foundation's weak. See, it's uh, religious people sometimes that I found out they are swaying forward and they're swaying backwards at times. 
I remember when I was sitting in there and I was called down into the church and I was going down in the preaching, praise and worship started. And I sat on the front row. I like sitting on the front row, not because uh, I want to be seen or nothing like that, but when I sit down in the front row, I wanted to be close to the anointing. I wanted to be close in there because I know that my life's going to change under the anointing. I I know everything can be broke under the anointing. I, I knew my burdens could be lifted under the anointing. But if I could just get down to the front row... And I sat down in there, and I remember I was going to praise and worship, and one of the ladies over there, in fact, she was the pastor's wife. It wasn't Sister Ty. Don't look over that way. And she says, we don't uh, worship right now. This is not the time. We don't stand up during our worship. I said, really? I said, well, I do. And she said, well, it was like thunder, like, what did what, 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 you say? I said, I do. When I come into the house of God and I feel the presence of the Lord and He wants me to stand, I'm going to stand. When He wants me to sit, I'll sit. When He wants me to kneel, I'll kneel. When He wants me to lay out prostrate, I'll lay out prostrate. If He wants me to do flip-flops in the aisle way, I'll do flip-flops in the aisle way. I fear I'm not down here. So no one can direct me around. The Holy Ghost guides me of where I need to go. And some people get mad at me for that and don't understand that. But that's okay. I'm still going to serve the Lord. And I'll still love you along the way. But sometimes it takes God, I found out, to turn their perceptions around. Sometimes it takes God to turn their perceptions around. All them people that back in Ohio that told me, you ain't never going to go down to Florida and they ain't never going to open up the doors at the church of God to allow you to come in and preach. I don't know about you, but the door had to be open tonight and I'm inside tonight. How many is inside tonight at the church of God at Faith Temple? They told me, you ain't never going to be able to preach in the assemblies of God. Because uh, they just don't allow no ex-Catholic to come in there and preach in the assemblies of God. Not only did God call me down there, he opened up the doorway. He provided for everything that I needed. He provided for my food, my shelter. I preached every night on Sunday evening. Uh, and all of a sudden, I had an a offering that I thought would blow my mind that I haven't even received since I've been preaching that they would give me every Sunday. God says, you go down there, and guess what? Just like he said, uh, some may call you a fool. But I believe it's in the Word of God where he says, uh, I'll take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Uh, I don't know about you. I was one of them foolish things. uh, And he took this foolish thing right here. uh, And he allows me then to go and walk through doors. He opened up. Nobody else opened up, but he opened up. And when he opens up the door, hallelujah, you don't have to worry about nobody closing them doors. I used to worry all the time when I'm preaching why nobody wasn't getting up and I used to do this and that and I'd go home and I'd say, man, did I miss it tonight or what's going on? It doesn't seem like nobody's, but you know what? I found out I don't care. I don't care. Because I figure if you don't want yours, I'm going to take yours. The four points tonight. Oh, let me back up a minute. I feel in here, in my spirit, when I walked in here tonight, there was something deeper and special tonight about what was going to take place. I'm always looking for a shift. And what I mean by that, sometimes we can just go our own way and we can stay in neutral. And how many know when you put a car in neutral or you put a truck in neutral, you don't go anywhere? You can fill it up with gas. You can make sure the oil's right. You can make sure the engine's purring and it sounds so good. But if you got it in neutral, you ain't going nowhere. I found out that you have to go down there and you have to shift it. 
I feel like you got to shift yourself. Sometimes when I feel like I don't want to praise and when I'm down and out, you better shift yourself into drive. And some of you need to shift it into overdrive. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, we've been sitting in the same seat. I come back here and I can almost pick them out anywhere. I mean, I'm talking about in all churches. I'm not talking about this here. Everywhere you go, we're always gonna, and we're that same way. Sometimes it gets on my nerves. My wife said, let's go down here. It seems like we're always our same seat when we come into Faith Temple. This is our seat where we sit. I don't want to sit there. I'm going to sit over here tonight. I'm going to sit right here tonight. But you know, someone, because I want to be out of the box. We've got so comfortable, we fell asleep in our same positions. And God says, I want to wake you up. I want to shake you up. That still ain't working. So if you want to rid yourself of the trials of life, God showed me that you sometimes got to drag that snake that fastened himself to your arm on over to the fire. He said, if I drag him over to the fire... And once I get him over to the fire, he said, shake that thing. I say, shake that thing. And when I begin to shake that thing, all those things started falling off of me because I shook them over the fire. How many of you know that if you just shake that thing? And sometimes we have to do that with ourselves. We have to shake ourselves. We have to shake ourselves. See, I don't want to be in the same place I was uh, last year. I don't want to be in the same place I was a year before. I don't want to be in the same seat. I don't want to be in the same way. God says if you just take those things uh, that have fastened themselves onto your arms, drag them over to the fire and shake yourselves. Somebody in here needs to drag some of those things that has fastened themselves to you over to the fire. I talked about tonight provision, protection, perseverance, and perception. They all have things in common with one another. And that is they all come out in the fiery trials of life. They all come out in the fiery trials of life. So if you want to rid yourselves of those trials, all you have to do is drag them over to the fire and shake yourselves. So don't worry about who, what, where, or what people are saying about you. You just got to worry about serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Take all those areas of your life that are drowning right now. And you either want to admit it or you don't want to admit it. But I tell you one thing, one time is that God will bring them out if you don't admit it. If you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways, I have found out that God, guess what? He could expose you at any moment. And I don't know if you ever had that happen to you, but it was, remember, the first time that I received the Lord and they pointed out, and it's not really that feeling inside that you have in there that, you know what? Everybody in here knows my sin. And it wasn't a good feeling. And some of you right now, the reason why we're in where we're at is because of the things that we've done. We went back rather than go forward. We need to get in alignment with God's Word. We need to shake everything off and shake it into the fire. Some uh, of you have been too scared to get close to the fire in fear of getting burnt. But I found out like this, like in the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, Inside there, God showed me, he says, it was like them in the fire, it puts off fumes, and they were in there. And see, they really messed up uh, when they told him to, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, to turn that thing up uh, seven times hotter. He got so mad, and the people that drug them over to the fire, they died. God took the people that talked them over there and put them inside that fiery furnace. But I'm here to tell you, you may be in a fiery furnace tonight, but I know that you can come out like looking like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Nothing, no hair on your head being burnt, and you're not even smelling like smoke. Because I serve a God that will protect you. I serve a God that will provide for you. I serve a God and stuff. If you just have the perseverance to keep on going, keep on walking, keep on moving. Uh, hallelujah. The, the Bible says that we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. Forget about what you're seeing and keep on walking. Some of us have stopped walking. 
I worked as a fireman in the United States Air Force in 1980 to 1984. And I got out and I went to work for the fire department in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll never forget this. It was on one of our calls and we got a call that the house was fully engulfed. And when I got there, we had to go into the back of the building and I remember that there was our department and they had a volunteer department in there. But we used to get down and we would wear our air packs and we had everything done and I was the first one in. And I remember when you come into the building, we had to do what they called a right hand search pattern. And as my hands on the wall and my other hands on the hose, I, I begin on my knees uh, getting lower than the smoke right there and I run into what I thought was a piece of wood. Because it wasn't wood in the fire. It was a leg in the fire. The guy had wanted to get some heat and he uh, uh, was running on hard times and he didn't have no money to pay for his electric bill. Uh, they didn't have no power in the house so he got an idea that I was going to use a hibachi grill and he was going to heat the house with a hibachi grill and he caught the house on fire. God showed me that some of your house is like that too. It's on fire tonight. But he says I can extinguish it. He said it's fully engulfed, but he said I can extinguish it tonight. Uh, how many of you know that he's the way, the truth, and the life? He'll protect you. But see that fireman, as I'm a fireman, God says that sometimes what you've done in the natural, he'll take you to do in the supernatural. I would never would have ever imagined that I was going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never did I ever think that I was. I never thought really that I was going to be a fireman. But I remember I had a, had a dream as a, as a young person. And I, I used to have my mom give me, I mean, I used to have the fire truck. I used to have the pedal fire truck. And I would go around and I would watch so many TV shows of, about this and about that. And you know what? The two things that a fireman does is that he protects property and he saves lives. And what an evangelist does, he does the same thing. You're the property of the living God. And I'm trying to tell you here tonight that I come in here to tell you that, that I can't save you, but he can save you. And he just wanted me to come in here with that word to tell you that, hallelujah, that if you're down and out and you're going the wrong way, he can go ahead and shift you and turn your direction around. What he did for me, he can do for you. What he did for Pastor Wendell, he can do for you. What he did for Sister Todd, he can do for you. I want to show you something. Go with me to Mark 11, 2 and 3. I'm going to get ready to close. But I want to show you this first. This is Palm Sunday, right? He might have read this to you this morning. I'm not sure what he preached on. But it says there in 11, 2, and 3, he says, And he saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, I'm going to turn this page here, ye shall find a colt tied whereon never man set. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. Stand to your feet a minute. Why I was listening this morning in that service, and why the preacher said those two verses there, he told me to tell you tonight that some of you was like that cult. He says that you was tied up, but Jesus is saying, I got need of you. You're worth something. You're, you're all tied up. You're all bound up, but I got need of you. See, I was like that colt. And I remember that somebody was sent to me and says that God can use you. In spite of the way that you are, in spite of the things that you did, in spite of where you're at, God says he's got need of you. And I found out this. That not only will he untie you and loose you, he'll sit down on top of you and he'll ride you and guide you into this future. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
I want to tell you something. And I mean this. This is the thing that held me back for so many years because I thought I wasn't good enough and I couldn't do it. But God says, I'm going to loose you tonight. I'm going to untie you and I'm going to untie you and I'm going to sit down upon you. Some of us get up here in a prayer line and we say that we want it, but I feel your spirit tighten up up here and not really receive what God has for you. You come up here bound, you leave bound. There's never been a burden so much on my heart to see people that are still bound up after all these years. You say, well, it can't happen, brother. We're in the church house. It can't happen. I sat in church for years bound up like that cult. I sat in years for church sitting on the sideline saying I'm not worthy. I can't do nothing. But one day somebody came by and said, Jesus has need of you. He untied me and unloosed me and he unraveled me and he says, I'm going to get on top of you and I'm going to ride you and I'm going to tell you where you're going and what you're going to do. I'm here to tell you tonight that God has a purpose and a plan for you. Hallelujah. You might have looked like a mule to somebody else, a colt to somebody else, but God says you're a child of mine. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. He said to me that you're more than a conqueror. Put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. I'm going to have Brother Ed play this song. I'm going to do a prayer line. But if you don't mean business, don't come up. And I don't see that in an ugly way or an unloving way. But if you don't want nothing from God, stay right where you're at. If you want to stay still tied up like a colt, stay where you're at. If you want to be loosed and free, I'm talking about free in all areas. There's somebody that's bound up with something in here tonight. There's somebody that needs to be free in some area. I don't know if it's in your mind. I don't know if it's in your praise. I don't know if it's in your worship. I don't know if it's in your finances. I don't know if it's in your relationship. It don't matter to me. All I know is that he, he's in the house tonight. He is the one that will set you free. See, too many times we're looking in our natural eye and say, well, it's the preacher. He does the same thing over and over again. I don't want to get into no repetitive motion that say every time we're going to have a, a prayer line that's going to do it like this. I'm just telling you right now, if you don't want it, stay where you're at. I don't know about you, but this season right here is too close for me to play around. It's too close that he's right around the corner and is this at any moment. In fact, I might not finish the next five minutes and he might be here. There's somebody that might be sitting over the fire, but they might be sitting over the wrong fire. They might be headed to, to hell. There's so many people out there that are looking for you and looking for you to carry the word. And I always said to myself, if I can't get excited in the house of God around my brothers and sisters, then how am I ever going to get excited and be compassionate and loving and to go out there and do that same thing out there in this lost and dying world? If I can't praise Him among my brothers and sisters, then I'm not going to praise Him anywhere else. Hallelujah. There's many times people go ahead and the biggest resistance that you have is during praise and worship. They won't get on their feet. Uh, they won't shout. Uh, they won't raise their hands. And I'm not saying you, if it don't fit, don't wear it. Like they say, if the shoe don't fit, don't wear it. But I'm just saying in general. I don't know what the pastor has said, but he said apparently that to go out there and we're going to have revival night. And if everybody's revived, we're okay then. We can just pack up and go home. But I don't know about you. I don't think that we can go home because there's not a seat there. There's nobody there, nobody there, nobody there, nobody there, nobody there, nobody there. We've got a lot of work to do, it looks like. We've got a lot of work to do in here. See, I've got to be able to grab somebody by the hand. And when it says compel them, that means to say that I'm going to bring them to the house of God. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to bring them to the house of God and say God's got something for you tonight. God's got something for you tonight. See, sister here, she came already ready. She already had it in the gear. She said, I already did that. I already went through this. I don't got to go through anything. But she came in prepared and ready for battle. Yes. And that's the way that we got to come in here hungry like that. 
You remember that when we would go to a, a high school football game or a, or a basketball game, and uh, I played basketball while I was in high school, and I'll never forget it. Man, I would get so pumped up to go, and whenever game day was on, baby, I was just, I couldn't wait to go into the, into the stadium there, into the basketball court, and I was ready for playing. That we should even go even beyond that when we're coming into the house of God. Because when we get into the house of God, see, on that basketball court, there's only a few things that's going to happen. I'm either going to score a basket or either I'm going to steal the ball from you. But when I get into the house of God, uh, anything can happen. Uh, my healing can happen in the house of God. Uh, my deliverance can happen in the house of God. Uh, I can be set free in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can be untied in the house of God. Uh, when I get under the anointing of God uh, and he comes down in here, I got to understand uh, that when we're under the anointing, which we're under right now, uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost sets down in this house, uh, we can have a night like they had in the upper room. Uh, we can lose our mind, and the perception may be that they're drunk, uh, but the perception was whether they want drinking no Budweiser. The perception is they want drinking no Bush beer. But I'm telling you what, they were drinking that new wine, and they got so filled with that new wine that they got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Now somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not going to stay long. I'm not going to stay long because the people that God spoke to already knows it right now. If you want something from God, I don't care what area, whatever it may be, I don't care what it is, God knows all about it. I ain't going to give you no more word. I already gave you enough word that you'd be able to go ahead and take all Wachula, all the next county, everything. Some people don't got to come to tell to come down here. But on the ushers, get them in a line right here. Let's do it in some type of order. Let's just take a moment to worship him. Let's take a moment to worship him. God's getting ready to remove every hindrance tonight. He's getting ready to loose you tonight. He's getting ready to heal you tonight. He's looking to see who is and who isn't.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here in your presence, Father, pour out your heart. mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Here in your presence, Lord, pour out your grace. And here in your presence, there is no need to hurry. Here in your presence, I will see your face. I will see your face. I will see your Through our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have made it. How about you? We need his presence, and he is here. In your presence, I find mercy. In your presence, I find your grace in your presence. There's no hurry in your presence. I seek your face and here in your presence, Father, pour out your mercy. Here in Lord, pour out your grace, and here in your presence, there is no need to hurry, here in your presence, I will see your face. Try the second verse with me. Here we go. In your presence, I find glory. In your presence, fullness of joy. And in your presence, I find glory. In your presence, I find my joy.
fill him, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, fill him. Fill him. Pour out your grace and hear in your presence. There is no need to Fill him, Lord. Fill him. Through our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have made it. How about you? We need his presence, and he is here. In your presence, I find mercy. In your presence, I find your grace. Just wait right there. You're going to get set free. There's no hurry in your presence. I seek your faith and hear in your presence. Father, pour right out your mercy. Just stand right there. I'm just start praying in the Holy Ghost. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Lord, pour out your grace and hear in your presence. There is no need to hurry. Here in your presence, touch right now, Jesus. I will see your face. Try the second verse with me. Here we go. In your presence, I find glory. You're going to turn everything around. You're going to start walking now in the direction of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You're going to start walking. Get away. You're not sure. You're ready for that? Get away. It's not me. It's not me. The Holy Ghost is going to do something here. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Of the Lamoshatan. I speak to the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that spirit right now. Pick her back up. Pick her back up. Pick her back up. Oh, no, 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 no. You coming out tonight in the name of Jesus. You are coming out. Open your eyes up. Open your eyes up. 
Open your eyes up. You coming out. You going to come out. You're not going to torment her no more. You're not going to hurt her no more. That spirit's coming out. You hear me? You're coming out in the name of Jesus. We ain't playing no more, but we casting you out in the name of Jesus. Open your eyes up. Open your eyes up. Open your eyes up in the name of Jesus. Open your eyes up. You're coming out. You're going to get free tonight. You're going to get free tonight. You want to get free tonight? You're going to get free tonight? That spirit of addiction that sits over top of you. You're going to be free tonight in the name of Jesus. That thing that's been trying to take you out, uh, that's been trying to take you another way. Uh, you coming out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over top of you. Look at me. Look at me. You want to be free, Sister Nan? You want to be free? Do you want to be free? He said, I ain't going to play no more. It's coming out tonight. It's coming out tonight. Raise your hands all the way up to heaven. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, shake her in the name of Jesus. Shake her and wake her up. Restore her mind in the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say I'm free. I'm free in the name of Jesus. Lose her voice in the name of Jesus. Lose her voice in the name of Jesus. Shut up, Moko. Man, you denounce it in the name of Jesus. Say I denounce that spirit of addiction. I denounce it. Say it, man. Say it loud, man. I denounce it. That's right. I denounce it in the name of Jesus. And now it goes. It goes in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. You come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. You come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. You lose her in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. You lose them right now. 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 We are helping you, man. We are helping you. We are helping you right now. You come out in the name of Jesus. You have no choice. You bowed in the name of Jesus. Nan has denounced you and you have to go. I've seen you walk in and out of this place and I tell you in the name of Jesus, this night you go. You go right now in the name of Jesus. You release her. She is free. Yes, Nan, say go. You go. You go in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. That's right, man. You tell him you have no right. No right. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it goes in the name of Jesus. He knows your heart. He knows your tired. He knows your tired. Help your dad there. The Holy Spirit is wanting to minister to them. Come on, saints of God, keep on praying. Uh, God's not through tonight. Uh, he's not through. Uh, he's in this house tonight. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need his presence and he is here. In your presence, I find mercy. In your presence, I find your grace. In your presence. 
Brother Ed, God was speaking and saying that in this house, He's established you as an elder in this house. You have a bigger, bigger responsibility than just back there. You're a pillar in here. 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 He says, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time for both of you. Now is the time. Father, right now, touch him right now. Touch him right now. Touch him right now, Lord Father God. And establish his ways, Lord Father God. As an elder in here, as Faith Temple Church of God, he's establishing you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He's seen everything that you went through. He's seen every, heard every pain, but he says that you stuck it out, uh, that you still stayed and you didn't run and you didn't go nowhere. He said, now is the time. He said, I'm lifting you up in this season right here. I'm lifting you up right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. There it is. 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 He's touching you right now. Lifting every burden. Destroying every yoke. He does us on the day. He got us on the day. Lord, touch him. Touch him, Lord. our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have made it. How about you? We need his presence and he is here. In your presence I find mercy. In your presence I find your grace. In your presence, there's no hurry. In your presence, I seek your face. And here in your presence, 
Father, pour out your mercy here in your presence. Lord, pour out your grace and here in your presence. There is no need to hurry here in your presence. I will see your face. Try the second verse with me. Here we go. In Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands right now. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Just to touch what God wants to do, church. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Through our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have made it. How about you? We need his presence, and he is here. In your presence, I He said, Build a place for his presence, church. Thank you, Lord. I find your grace in your presence. There's no hurry in your presence. I seek your face and here in your presence, Father, pour out your mercy. Here in your presence, Lord, pour out your grace. And here in your presence, there is no need to hurry. Here in your presence, I will see your face. Try the second verse with me. Here we go. In your presence, I find glory. In your presence, fullness of joy. And in your presence, I find glory. In your presence, come on, worship I church.
times louder that you're going to feel that now. Seven times more, he said, it's going to be increased. Seven times more on that anointing. Seven more times more. Yeah. And, I, and I see seven because he said, you're going to start to work in not just nine spiritual gifts, but he said seven spiritual gifts, but he goes, you're going to complete it to nine. But he said, I'm seeing seven right now for completion. He said, I'm seeing seven this season right in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. In the name of, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. There it is. 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 Right there. Right there. Right there. He that our son today. Yes. Yes. Right there. Yes. 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 Your work be done. Yes. I'm going to get one of them blankets here for a minute. As you walked up here, God was showing me how sometimes you thought you were just a blanket carrier. And when you have a fire sometimes, God says, you, are you returning? Through our circumstances, in the darkness, in our trials. If he was not here, I would not have made it. More air on it, more air on it, more air on it. And it is, he says, it's getting hotter and hotter. It's more intense and more intense and more intense. He said, you're more than just someone that puts you on. He said, you're the servant of the Most High. And he's going to touch you right now. He's going to touch you like never before. He's going to touch you like never before. But he's getting to raise you up higher, 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 higher. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. your presence. There's no hurry in your presence. I seek your face and here in your presence. Father, pour out your mercy. Here in your presence, Lord, pour out your grace and here presence there is no need to hurry here in your presence I will see your face try the second verse with me here we go in your presence I find Ready. Get ready to receive this right now. Don't close down. Don't shut down. But he's got something for you. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He asked for more. Worship, worship the Lord, church. Come on, saints of God. Worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Right now, I believe this is pouring into you. I can see it like it's pouring into you. I can sit over top of your head and pour it down into you. He said, just receive it in the name of Jesus. There you go. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There you go. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it, brother, in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Consider it done in the name of Jesus. Consider it done. Lift your hands, church. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I told you that God is opening up a season. This week or something will happen next Sunday. In your lives. You have to be hungry. As you've been. A few weeks ago I told you you gotta be hungry for God. You can't be just familiar with just coming to church. Just continue to. You see? 
Brother Mark, you was all over this morning. It was as if you were here listening. I talked to him about Jesus the King. That's my King. And we want to serve Him. We have to be sensitive to Him. And sensitive to the Spirit. Mark and I was talking this last week and he said um, if I had Sunday night open I said well I'll let you know and down in my spirit I, and, and I knew he's, I just knew he was supposed to be here tonight and Thursday I said well I'll give you I'll give, after church Wednesday night I didn't give him a call and then lo and behold we end up at the same place Thursday night I told him there, I said, you come on. God's got something in store. Amen? I mean, it was good for you, but I think it was good for him. Amen? There's an apostolic connection in what God's wanting to do here. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mike, I'd like you to do... Uh, Mike, if you'd get me an offering bucket over here, please. I want us to bless the man of God as we always do at this time and bring a seed to to the man of God thank you Lord for your seed that you're going to raise up right now and fathers we prepare our hearts as we prepare our hearts Lord and we're leaving for a mighty move of God in the house of God Lord, we worship you, Lord, what you're doing right now. As, as you're just doing and being obedient, I want, I want to teach you something. As you're in time of worship and service, the Lord lays on your altar. You ever felt like just getting up and bringing your offering and laying it on the altar? You need to start doing that. Just even when the word starts being preached or the altar being, you know, the worship time. And just be obedient to the word of God. Be obedient to to the to the Holy Spirit and you watch him work in your in your heart in your life and um, thank you for being obedient tonight brother Mark Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for this gift thank you for the gift that you brought you brought the gift of the evangelist in the house so you got to understand when the gift of the evangelist and the gift of the pastor comes there's an apostolic connection. Just a Debbie, come here. Thank you, Lord. Ty, would you come right, right here? Just keep come, keep bringing. The day that he called me and told me what had happened. And then when I seen you guys Thursday night, what the enemy meant for bad, God has turned it for his glory. And I told him in those days that God was going to release him. And then he told me what he did. We're going to take authority over fear. You haven't talked to me, have you? We're going to take authority over fear that every provision for your household, for your guy's household, is going to come. Because somebody made a mistake on a truck, the enemy wanted to take him out. Because he, God's got his hand on him, though. It wasn't a happen chance that that DOT driver was right there. As a witness for you, Mark. As a witness for you. But this woman of God is going to have some peace tonight over what's happened as well as a decision. Because Mark has told me again, strike two, bud. I'm off the truck. I'm going to obey God and do what God's called me to do. Look what he did here tonight. Thank you for ministering to my congregation. Thank you for being obedient. You hear what I'm saying? The 
But you know what? That connection, as it unites in unity, God does some greater things. But God's going to move. There's some no turning back. No turning back. Stretch forth your hands to this woman of God. I don't know if you know it, but Sister Debbie works full time at Watson Clinton at the Cancer Research Center in, in Lakeland. She takes care of a lot of doctors. But I know this that God has already given a word before. And I believe now the Lord is saying to this couple, walk in this and watch me do this. And no turning back and moving forward. You even spoke it tonight. There'll be times that the fire will be there. There'll be times that the, 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 the difficulties will be there. She and I know we've been there. We still at times, but we don't turn back. We keep pressing on. Father, I lay my hands on this daughter of the Lord. And I pray tonight. Come on, pray with me, church. Sister Sarah, come up here quickly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We call your word. Intercessors, come right here behind her. In the name of Jesus. 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 Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peace. Peace, Lord. Peace into their life. Peace into their spirit. Lord, you brought them here tonight to minister to this congregation as he did well. And Father God, you're going to minister to them. You're going to give them strength. We're going to undergird them, Father. We're going to undergird them tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray complete healing in his body. Completely clear these lungs. Lord, this pancreas produced the right amount of insulin in his body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Michael, bring your mom up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. mind or by power. Come on intercessors. Come on men and women of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Father I pray God tonight you will touch her from the top of her head. That you will heal her. You will bring everything in balance and strengthen her body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, you through bringing a gift to them tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Supernatural strength into His being. Cleansing, cleansing in his physical body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that have watched the service tonight by our web TV that we have, if you need prayer, you can call in anytime, 773-863-773-2484 and info at faithfieldchurch.com. But we're praying for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah.